Hello friends, welcome to Fairs Cloud Learn to Lead. This is Ashu and today we will discuss very important current fairs of 22nd and 23rd of August 2021. You can see two best images of the day, but today we will discuss very important and the most important current fair. So watch this video till last. But I am requesting you all the students that you can download our application from the description box link and the name of the application is Careers Cloud. After that, you can log in with your email ID and after login, you can, clack, uh, you can click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two year. Both the subscription prices are very much low. If you see the price, you will surprise. And most important, we are providing you 90 to 95% of that current fairs which can come in every exam. So this is the genuinity, this is the hard work of a fairs cloud team. But how we are covering this current fair? We are providing you daily section. In the daily section, you will receive three things. One is the detailed current fair, question and answer format of current fair, and third is the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on daily basis. Next is the weekly section. Again, you will receive three things. One is the detailed current fair. Next is the question and answer format and the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on the weekly basis. Next and the most important is monthly current fair section. We are providing four type of PDFs. One is the detailed current fair. Second is the question and answer format of the current fairs and the best 100 current fairs is also provided in the form of question and answer and one is the pocket PDF. It means the two liner and the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise the current fair very easily before your exam. But to enhance your performance, we are also providing topic wise current fair. We are providing you 20 most important topics which are very important for every type of exam. It means if you want to cover all the current fairs related to one topic just from single PDF, then you can use these topic wise PDF. And if you are a banking aspirant, we are providing three things. One is the detail. Second is the question and answer format of current fairs only related to banking and economy. And third is the quiz section that is also related to banking and economy. And you can attempt this quiz on our application on monthly basis. If you want to cover all the past current fair of 2021 just from single PDF, then you can use this exam PDF. And we are providing detailed budget and economic survey. And guys, remember, we are also providing expected question and answer which can examiner ask from budget and economic survey. If we are preparing for your respective state exam, then we are also providing state current fairs and we are covering every state and union territory. So all these things comes under one subscription. There are no different different prices for these subscriptions. We are providing all these things under one subscription. Just you have to download our application from the description box link, log in with your email ID and then click on this crack current fair section and you can subscribe for one year as well as for two year. But if you're a new student or you are just starting your preparation or current fair section, then I'm advising you to buy two years current fair. Because the price uh, difference of one year uh, as well as if you are comparing with the two year, then it is very much low. So that's why you will get 10% extra discount on that low price if you use this code ASH10. And if you have any query, you can email us on this email ID or you can call us on this number. So let's start today's current fair that is 22nd and 23rd of August 2021. But I am again requesting you all the student that you have to like this video. You have to share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform. And remember one thing, you can join our telegram group from the description box link. Here's the first question in the most important section. Who is the first Indian to posthumously receive the Congressional Gold Medal for his immense contribution to promote peace and non-violence? So the most important thing under this question is this Congressional Gold Medal or Congress Gold Medal, you can also say that. Because the United States Congress or you can say the United States Legislature has commissioned these gold medal as its highest expression of national appreciation for distinguished achievement and the contribution. It means it is given by the United States of America. And this person belongs to India and uh, he is the first Indian and he received this award posthumously. It means uh, you can say uh, all these persons are died. Uh, so answer of this question is Mahatma Gandhi. So A is the answer. So Mahatma Gandhi is the first Indian to posthumously receive the Congressional Gold Medal for his immense contribution to promote peace and non-violence. And you can also see this Mahatma Gandhi, first Indian to get this United States of America Congressional Gold Medal. And Congressional Gold Medal is the highest civilian award in the United States of America. And this United States Congress Legislature has commissioned gold medals as its highest expression of national appreciation for distinguished achievement and contribution. And Gandhiji received this medal uh, in the, for the contribution of promote peace and non-violence. 
and guys you can also remember the first recipient of this medal were participants of the american revolution which was uh, uh, in between 1775 to 83 or the war of 1812 and the mexican war of 1846 to 1848 but the scope now has broadened into include uh, you can say actors authors entertainers musicians you can say athletes humanitarians and the foreign recipients among pioneers in some other fields most recently this medal was awarded to the us capitol police uh, those who protected the us capitol in the january 2021 after the violence occurrence due to the trump tweet or donald trump tweet and you can also remember that this award uh, uh, was awarded uh, to the 1980s us summer olympics team uh, uh, which is uh, uh, you can say this team won uh, so many medals in the 1980s of summer olympics this medal also given to robert f kennedy and nelson mandela george washington and many others but you have to remember now only the one name that is mahatma gandhi remember this award it is congress gold medal or it is congressional gold medal congress stands for the united states legislature and united states legislature or the parliament is known as congress so you have to remember these things these are very very important move into next question which institute selected as the best in india i am only talking about india according to the academic ranking of the world university 2021 first of uh, all you have to remember that this academic ranking of the world university 2021 is released by which organization uh, so guys remember this uh, ranking is released by shanghai ranking consultancy remember shanghai ranking consultancy and this belongs to which country shanghai belongs to china and remember this is iisc bengaluru or indian institute of science bengaluru it means indian institute of science bengaluru was selected as the best university in country or in india i am only talking about india and university of calcutta ranked on the second position in india but if we are talking about globally then you have to remember the first rank goes to harvard university harvard university and uh, second rank goes to stanford university so you have to remember the first and second overall or it means on the globe and if you are talking about only india then it is iisc bengaluru and second rank goes to university of calcutta you can see here arwu arwu stands for academic ranking of the world universities and iisc bengaluru and calcutta university top institutions from india and this ranking is published by shanghai ranking consultancy and the name of the list is academic ranking of the world university 2021 but it is only for the higher education institutions and harvard university is on the top position it means on the first position over the globe and uh, you can say stanford university is on the second position and university of cambridge on the third position so first of all you have to remember the first and the second positions only all over globe the ranking is based on the six objective indicators to rank the world universities you can say these six indicators like uh, alumni and the staff winning nobel prizes and the fields medals uh, number of highly cited researchers number of articles published in the journals and so many things but you have to remember six objective indicators to rank these world universities and academic ranking of the world university present ranking of the world's top 10000 or not 10000 top 1000 research universities every year based on the transparency and objective third party data so you have to remember they uh, basically uh, uh, do this ranking over the 1000 research universities and out of these 1000 research university harvard university is on the top and from india iisc bengaluru is on the top so remember these things now we are moving to the next question ntpc or national thermal power corporation launched india's largest floating solar photovoltaic uh, project in which state so uh, it is india's largest power producer company which is ntpc limited launched india's largest floating solar photovoltaic uh, project with a capacity of almost 25 megawatt on the reservoir of its simhadri you have to remember this name simhadri thermal station and this is situated in visakhapatnam and all students know that visakhapatnam is in andhra pradesh so answer of this question is d so you can see here NTPC commissions India's largest floating solar project and it is situated in Simhadri thermal station and this is situated in Visakhapatnam Andhra Pradesh you have to remember two keywords here Simhadri thermal station examiner can ask this and total capacity is 25 megawatt and it will become India's largest floating solar photovoltaic this is important keyword it is not the largest floating solar project it is largest floating solar photovoltaic project 
and the floating solar project has the potential to generate electricity from more than 1 lakh solar photovoltaic modules. So this project could help to light around 7,000 households and also avoid the emission of at least 46,000 tons of carbon dioxide every year during the lifespan of the project. And uh, this project could save around 1364 million liters of water per annum because uh, uh, it would be sufficient to meet the yearly water requirements of 67,000 household. This is again very, very important because we are talking about photovoltaic module. And recently, NTPC also made an agreement with the Union Territory of the Ladakh for a green hydrogen mobility project. And this will be the India's first green hydrogen mobility project. This is again very, very important question. And we covered this question in the most important section. So you have to remember about NTPC here. You have to remember about Andhra Pradesh here. So these two things are uh, extra important. And uh, remember this NTPC, National Thermal Power Corporation. It was established in 1975. Its headquarters is in New Delhi. And its chairman and managing director is Gurdeep Singh. Gurdeep Singh. And you can also remember about Andhra Pradesh, Chief Minister, very famous for uh, his uh, new and unique schemes like YS Jagan Mohan Reddy, YS Jagan Mohan Reddy, and the governor is Vishwa Bhushan Harichandan. Vishwa Bhushan Harichandan. Three national parks are very important. One is the Rajiv Gandhi mm -hmm. National Park, which is also known as Rameshwaram National Park, Shri Venkateshwara National Park. This is again very important. Papi Konda National Park. So these three are very very important. Moving to next question. Which is the world's most valuable company? We are talking about world's, not India's. World's most valuable company according to the Global Huron 500 report. So this Global 500 list 2021 is released by Huron Research Institute. So you have to remember it is released by Huron Research Institute. And it is the most important report of all over world. And according to this report, the world most valuable company is Apple. So answer of this question is D. Answer of this question is D. You can see here Reliance Industries, I am talking about India, then Reliance Industries has emerged as the most valued Indian company on a global list. If we are talking about only India country, in the top 500 known state run companies, it means non-governmental companies, but saw its ranking slipped by 3 points. Because uh, you can say uh, Reliance Industries led by Mukesh Ambani has witnessed increase of almost 11% uh, 188 billion dollar valuation but ranking slipped by three places to 57 now global rank is 57 earlier the global rank was 54 but now it is 57 so you can see here Huron global 500 list 2021 released by Huron research institute and uh, from Indian side it is Reliance Industries who topped the list of Indian companies with a global rank of 57 earlier this rank was you can say 54 but now this company slipped by three ranks uh, now it is 57 and 12 Indian companies are listed in the Huron Global 500 Most Valuable Companies of 2021. And it is a list of 500 most valuable non-state controlled companies in the world ranked according to their value, defined as a market capitalization for listed companies for valuation uh, for non-listed companies. And you can also remember on the basis of the number of companies featured in the list, India got 9th rank. India got 9th rank if we are talking country wise and how many companies are listed under this country and India got 9th rank because United States of America is on the top because total four, uh, sorry, 243 companies are listed under 500 most valuable companies 2021 and China is on the second position China's 47 uh, companies are listed under this list and Japan's 30 companies are listed under this list and the ranking of the companies like uh, you can say TCS, HDFC Bank. Uh, Bharti Airtel declined compared to the previous year, previous year and on the basis of number of companies I already told India's rank is 9th. So you have to remember these important points because these are very very important and you can also remember the second rank goes to Microsoft, third rank goes to Amazon. You can also remember this, this is again very important you can see here, uh, first rank goes to Apple and second row, uh, rank goes to Microsoft, third is Amazon, fourth is Alphabet which is also a parent company of Google. And uh, fifth one is the Facebook. So you can remember if you want, otherwise you can remember these three. First is Apple, second is Microsoft and third is Amazon. Moving to next question, but you can also remember the important uh, personalities related to these companies. Like you can see this list. Uh, Apple, you know, uh, Apple Tim Cook. Tim Cook is currently the CEO of this company, Chief Executive Officer. Uh, Microsoft, you can remember Satya Nadella is their CEO. Uh, Amazon Andy JC, this is very important question, Andy JC, CEO and Alphabet you can remember Sundar Pichai here, 
Sundar Pichai and uh, Facebook, I think, called no Mark Jacobuk is there. So remember these things again, very, very important. Move into next section. It is our very important question section, but you have to like this video, share this video and subscribe this channel. If you're new on this platform and you can join our telegram group from the description box link. And here is the question, which state launched Dalit Bandhu scheme? So remember this scheme, Dalit Bandhu scheme. So the chief minister of Telangana, K. Chandrasekhar Rao launched this Dalit Bandhu scheme by releasing a financial assistance of almost 7.60 crore and it is specially for the state people of Telangana but it is for the Dalits. So it is Dalit Bandhu scheme. So Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao rolled out this Dalit Bandhu scheme. You have to just remember the name and under this scheme every Dalit beneficiary family will provide 10 lakh rupees. It means it is a financial assistance scheme and the state government will provide 10 lakh rupees and the beneficiary are free to spend this money as desired but are advised to use to create a source of revenue so that uh, they can uh, create or they can use this 10 lakh rupees for the future investment and the total fund of rupees 1.75 lakh crore would be required because total we have to cover 17 lakh Dalit families in the state of Telangana and in the first phase priority will be given to the families belonging to the poor area or the poorest families or uh, the down uh, um, downtrodden sections but uh, this scheme will be implemented in the four phases and in the fourth phase it will be extended to the government staff and the retired employees. So you have to remember the name is Telangana, Dalit Bandhu scheme, 10 lakh rupees will be provided. These three things are very important and uh, you can remember Chief Minister I already covered K. Chandrasekhar Raoji and uh, Governor is uh, Tamli Zai Sondre Ranjan, Tamli Zai Sondre Ranjan, uh, National Park, three National Park, Kasu, uh, Reddy National Park, Mahavir Harina National Park, Mahavir Harina National Park, Murugabni National Park. So these are very, very important. Moving to next question. What is the name of maritime exercise or the Navy exercise which was recently conducted between the Indian Navy and the Qatar Navy in the Persian Gulf? So two things are very important. This exercise name. Second, it is happened between India and the Qatar. And third, it is happened in Persian Gulf. So answer of this question is Zayar al-Bahar. So you have to remember the name of the exercise is Zayar al-Bahar. Zayar al-Bahar, India and Qatar joint naval exercise which was happened uh, on 9th of August to 14th of August in the Persian Gulf. In the Persian Gulf, you can see this is Persian Gulf. This is India guys. This is Red Sea. Above that, this is Mediterranean Sea and uh, between Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea, it is Suez Canal. So you can also remember it was opened in 1869. So uh, this is Arabian Sea, this is Red Sea. So you have to remember Persian Gulf. Persian Gulf uh, basically attached with Iran, you can say. UAE is there, uh, Iraq is there, Saudi Arabia is there. So these countries are very, very important for the Persian Gulf. And this exercise was conducted under this Gulf. And Indian Navy, a guided missile strength frigate INS Trikand participated from Indian side. And uh, Zaire Al-Bahar exercise was initiated in 2019. And it focuses on the fight against terrorism maritime piracy, maritime security, and it also aims to consolidate uh, uh, consolidate interoperability and the strengthen the maritime exchanges and the friendship between the navies of the both countries like India and the Qatar. But guys, you have to remember the activities during the harbor phase included cross tech visits, professional interaction between the specialist and the official visits. So uh, these exercises are uh, uh, another exercises in the option like ABCD. You can see here Dastalik is there. Dastalik uh, is in between India and Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. And it, is, it was happened, this exercise was recently happened. Dastalik second was happened in Uttarakhand. Uttarakhand. TTX uh, 2021, it is table top exercise and it was happened between the three countries India, next is Sri Lanka, next is Maldives. So these three countries uh, conducted the Navy exercise which is known as tabletop exercise and it was conducted in Mumbai. Conducted in Mumbai. Zai Talwar or Talwar, it is again very important. This exercise was in between India and United Arab Emirate and it was conducted in Abu Dhabi. So again guys, these exercises are very, very important. Moving to next question. National Payment Corporation of India uh, international payment has partnered with which bank to provide the UPI payment system in United Arab Emirates. So it means this bank also belongs to United Arab Emirates. So answer of this question is Mashrek Bank. So answer of this question is C. So NPCI Inter international payment system, which is you can say the international arm of the National Payment Corporation of India has partnered with UAE Bank, which is known as Mashrek Bank 
uh, will provide the United uh, Unified Payment Interface, the mobile-based real-time payment system in the United Arab Emirates. So NPCA Global Arm ties up with the Mashrek Bank to provide UPI payments in the United Arab Emirates. And the partnership will support more than 2 million Indians which are residing basically in the United Arab Emirates who are traveling to the United Arab Emirates to make payments using the UPI for their purchases in the shops and the merchant stores across United Arab Emirates. And the acceptance of the UPI would boost the digital payment ecosystem in the UAE and also enable the wider reach of the unified payment interface in the international market. And uh, you can also remember this recent latent news. This is again very, very important because this National uh, Payment Corporation of India International Payment Limited in partnership with the Royal Monetary Authority of Bhutan implemented the Bharat interface for money or the BEAM UPI QR quick response based payment in Bhutan. So you have to remember Bhutan became the first country to adopt India's UPI standards for its QR development. So it is the Bhutan and uh, this country will use India's BEAM UPI system. So remember this is the first country all over world. So guys you can also remember about this organization NPCA International Payment. This organization is important. It is a fully owned subsidiary of NPCA National Payment Corporation of India and it is devoted to the development of National Payment Corporation of India indigenous real-time payment system UPA card scheme Rupay outside India and it was established in the last year like in 2020 its headquarters in Mumbai and its CEO is Ritesh Shukla Ritesh Shukla I am talking about NPCA International Payment Limited but if we are talking about NPCA then it was established in 2008 but its headquarters is in uh, uh, Mumbai but its uh, uh, head is or you can say CEO is Dilip Asbe Dilip Aspe. So remember these things, these are very, very important. Next question is Indify partner with which company to launch first of its kind small business loan program. So first of all, you have to remember this Indify. Indify is a technological based lending platform and uh, this lending platform has partnered with one company so that they can advertise uh, about the loans which will be given to the small businessmen. And this company is guys Facebook answer of this question is A. So you can see here Facebook ties up with the NDFI for small business loans initiative and you can also see here it will provide loans worth rupees 5 lakh to 50 lakh for small businessmen's advertising on the Facebook platform and uh, this is very important because the loans will bear almost interest rate of 17 to 20 percent and there is a 0.2% additional reduction in the interest rate for the business owned by the woman or you can say either partially or the fully and the loans will be processed within 5 working days 5 working days if the borrower submit the documents without requiring any collateral and facebook will show its advertisers about the program about the program specially and it would not get involved in determining the eligibility of the borrower's recovery etc things because indify Indy 5 will decide on the eligibility criteria of the borrowers such as the credit worthiness, bear the risk of loan default and other things. So Facebook will only show the advertise about the program and it would not get involved in determining the eligibility of the borrowers. So you have to remember this is Facebook. Facebook uh, is only providing a platform to the Indy 5 so that they can disburse this loan to the uh, small and uh, medium businessmen. But interest rate is so much high like 17 to 20 percent but they are giving a reduction to 0.2% only to the women or uh, which are involved in the business either partially or the fully. But you have to remember this Facebook, Facebook headquarters is in California in United States of America and its chief executive officer is Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. Indify is not so much important. You can remember its headquarters is in Gurugram if you want. Otherwise, it is not important. Moving to next question. Which state launched two platforms? One is Atan Nirbar Krishi Yojana. Second is Atan Nirbar Bhagwani Yojana. It means Atan Nirbar Krishi Yojana is directly related to agriculture. Atan Nirbar Bhagwani Yojana is related to horticulture. So again, very important thing. But these two uh, credit linked schemes are basically started by, uh, uh, you can say Arunachal Pradesh. Arunachal Pradesh. You can see here. Arunachal cabinet approves credit linked schemes to boost agriculture, especially as the horticulture. And Arunachal Pradesh has set aside rupees 60 crore of subsidy. This is again very important because this scheme provides benefit to the agriculture and horticulture and these two schemes will facilitate almost 300 crore rupees of investment in the agro-based sector. 
and our Natcha Pradesh government already set aside rupees 60 crore of subsidy. Why there is a need of subsidy? Because this program has three components. Both the schemes have three components. One is bank loan, second is subsidy, third is the beneficiary contribution. It means some money will be provided by banks. One uh, part will be provided in the form of subsidy by the government and third is the beneficiary contribution. And you can also remember that 45%, 45% will be the subsidy, 10% will be the beneficiary contribution and rest of the money will be provided by banks through loan and the interest rate will be very, very low. And the schemes will be available for the cultivators, self-help groups and the farmers, producer organizations. And it has decided that share of the subsidy would be 45% in the scheme, which will be bared by the state government. And the people across the state can apply for the scheme at the deputy commissioner office of the district. So you can remember these two schemes. One is for the agriculture, boosting agriculture. Second is for the horticulture, out of 100% money, 45% will be provided by state government in the form of subsidy, not in the form of loan. 10% will be uh, by the beneficiary and rest of the money, or you can say, 45% of the money will be provided through bank loans. The interest rate will be very, very low. So remember about Arunachal Pradesh, very important. Chief Minister is Pema Khandu ji, Pema Khandu. And uh, uh, Governor is Brigadier B.D. Mishra ji, B.D. Mishra. National Park, two national parks are very important. One is the Malling National Park. Next is the Namdafa National Park. Namdafa National Park. There is one more important thing. Packet Tiger Reserve is also there. Malling, Namdafa and Packet Tiger Reserve. Moving to next question, core site artificial intelligence, it is Israel based software company will set up an artificial intelligence center of the excellence in which state. So again, very important question. And this core site artificial intelligence also tied up with one organization. This organization is known as AMTRON, AMTRON, AMTRON stands for Assam, Assam Electronics Development Corporation Limited. So answer of this question is very simple. Now this center of excellence will be established in Assam. So you can see here this Amtron. Amtron is uh, Assam Electronics Development Corporation of India has signed a memorandum of understanding with Israel's company, which is known as Coresight Artificial Intelligence and both signed MOU for setting up Artificial Intelligence Center of Excellence in Gohati Technological City, which is situated in Assam. And uh, both signed memorandum of understanding. It means Assam and Israel signed a memorandum of understanding. And MOU will establish a strong facial recognition technology development and services, which is also related to artificial intelligence, uh, which also includes setting up facial recognition center of excellence. And uh, its main objective is to provide facial recognition services through artificial intelligence for the most challenging conditions, such as recognizing faces in the extreme uh, angels, moving crowds, uh, low quality images, partially covered faces and others with the personal privacy protection. So they will provide these type of the thing to different different category. But you have to remember about Israel guys because we are talking about one most important country Israel Prime Minister recently appointed Prime Minister was Neftali Bennett. So you can remember this name Neftali Bennett. Capital is Jerusalem and currency is really shekel. So you can remember these things. And about Assam, you can also remember Assam Chief Minister is Himant Biswa Sharma and uh, governor, is, governor is Jagdish Mukherjee. Himant Biswa Sharma is currently Chief Minister. Very important national park, but the latest is Dehing Patkai National Park. Raimona National Park is also there. Raimona, this was also declared in the 2020, last 2020. Dehing Patkai is declared in uh, 2021, even in the month of July. And uh, there is Kajiranga National Park. Manas National Park, Orang National Park is also there, Nameri National Park is also there guys, Nameri National Park, Kajiranga, so uh, uh, all I think seven covered, Dehing Patkai, Raimona, Kajiranga, Manas, Orang, Nameri, only one left, this is Dibru Shaikova, Dibru Shaikova, Dibru Shaikova is also one of the biosphere reserve in Assam. Moving to next question, financial technological startup which is known as Capital Float has partnered with which company to extend its buy now? Pay later system. It means they are providing one credit uh, card type of system, which is known as buy now pay later system. And uh, this company is Capital Float, and they extended with the Razor Pay. So they tied up with the Razor Pay to extend these type of the services. So Razor Pay and the Capital Float in partnership with Pay Now uh, Pay Later Solution. So you have to remember this is Pay Now Pay Later means they are providing one credit solution, and uh, buy now pay later solution is also known as Walnut Three Sixty Nine of capital float. They are already providing these type of facility 
under the uh, umbrella pro program which is known as walnut 369 and under this partnership through walnut 369 the customers could sign up while shopping and get instant credit with zero documentation option so its main objective like capital float plans to extend its buy now pay later solution to over 1 lakh partners 1 lakh partners and serve customers in 100 cities across india and the customers can pay the their purchases over 3 6 or 9 months or uh, you can say they can pay all the amount in the installments and the partnership will support online shoppers and new to credit customer and even through to this uh, walnut application of this capital float they also offer loans insurance and personal finance management so you have to just remember the name of the company name of the company is capital float and their application is walnut application and the walnut 369 platform is also belongs to this capital float so you have to remember the name of the company and this razor pay so these two things are very very important Next is Tayava or the Tiva tribal community of which state celebrated a Vanchuva festival 2021. So you have to remember the name of the festival. It is Vanchuva festival uh, from Wa. you can stand, you can remember this Wa word. Vanchuva festival 2021 is celebrated by Tiva tribal community and this tribal community belongs to which state? Major state is Assam. So you can see here Tiva tribal men of Kirby Anglong district of Assam celebrates Vangchuva festival 2021 and this Tiva tribal community living in the hills celebrated this uh, Vangchuva festival 2021 in Kirby Anglong district you have to remember the name of the district Kirby Anglong district of Assam and this festival is related to agriculture as it marks the good harvest and also involves prayers for the protection from pest and natural climatages. And on this day, uh, Tiva tribal's men perform their traditional dance in their native attire along with a uh, bunch of rituals performed by the people clad in their native attires. And this uh, uh, tribe is also known as Lalang tribe or uh, this Tiva tribe people are a part of the Bodo Kachri group and Bodo is a tribe of Assam. And they mainly live in Assam and Meghalaya and also found in some parts of Arunachal Pradesh and Manipur. It means they found in northeastern states like Assam is the main area. Meghalaya is the main area and also lives in the Arunachal Pradesh and Manipur. And Thai stands for water and Wa stands for superior. So you can remember what is the meaning of Thaiwa, water superior. So remember these words. Assam we already talked about, Chief Minister is Himant Biswa Sharma and Governor is Jagdish Mukhi. But you can also remember the seven national parks which I earlier told you. Moving to next question. India sends largest contingent for the Paralympics. So let's take a look about the Paralympics. Uh, you have to remember two or three things very important for Paralympics like the Tokyo 2020 Summer Paralympics Games will be held from 24th of August to 5th of September 2021. This is the timeline of the Paralympics and official mascot is Sumeti. You can see here this is the official mascot of Paralympics and this is for the Summer Olympics like Maritova is for the Summer Olympics and Sumeti for the Paralympics. And for the first time, badminton and taekwondo will be introduced by replacing sailing and seven a side of football. So two games recently added in the Paralympics. One is the badminton and second is the taekwondo. But they also replaced sailing and seven a side football. And uh, uh, you can also remember this is the important thing that India will field their largest contingent ever in 2020 Tokyo Paralympics because a total of 54 athletes. 54 athletes will compete in nine sporting events like uh, uh, badminton, athletics, powerlifting, shooting, swimming, table tennis, taekwondo, you can say canoeing. So these are the nine events under which 54 athletes will represent India. But in 2016, in 2016, you can say in the Rio Olympics, only 19 Indian athletes represented in the Paralympics. But now they are 54. And remember, uh, higher jumper, high jumper Mariappan Thangavelu. Remember this uh, very important player and uh, he is very famous high jumper and he also won the gold in the Rio Olympics, Rio Paralympics 2016 will be the flag bearer of the India in the opening ceremony. This is very very important. Mariappan Thangavelu, high jumper and he also won the gold medal in the 2016 Rio Paralympics. And Prachi Yadav is also said to become India's first uh, um, para canoe at the Tokyo para games this is again very very important you have to remember the name it is Parachi Yadav and uh, uh, she became the first Indian 
to become a uh, first para uh, para canoe at the Tokyo Para Games and uh, you can also remember one important player Harvinder Singh and Vivek Chikara i am writing here name Harvinder and Vivek full name is Harvinder Singh and Vivek Chikara are the first men archers from the country to qualify for the para olympic games they are archers and again i am writing one name this is avni avni lekhera avni lekhera i think spelling is correct avni lekhera will be the first indian woman para shooter to complete at uh, uh, para olympics so this is again very very important i am again repeating three names which are very basically four names which are very important one is prachi yadav prachi yadav india's first para canoe at the tokyo para games Second is Harvinder Singh and Vivek Chikara are the first men archers from the country to qualify for the games. Next is Avni Lekhera or Arvini Lekhera will be the first Indian woman para shooter to compete at the Para Olympics. So these four names you have to remember. These are very very important. And Anurag Thakur ji, who is currently the uh, new Union Minister of uh, Sports, launched theme song "Kar De Kamal Tu" for Para Olympics. And you can also remember. that this song is composed and sung by sanjeev singh sanjeev singh this song is even sung and composed by sanjeev singh uh, who is also uh, a basically uh, divyang cricket player and uh, remember about one important committee it is international olympic committee international olympic committee headquarters is in bonn germany and uh, its president is andrew andrew parsons so you can remember if you want the name in name can be important so remember these things these are very very important which i told you but when it completed i will tell you more information now we are moving to next section it is our important question section but you have to like this video share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join a telegram group from the description box link india finalized a deal with which country for the procurement of ak103 series of assault rifles for the indian army so again very important uh, you have to remember uh, on uh, 20th of august 2021 india finalized a deal with russia with russia for procurement of a sizable number of ak uh, 103 series of the assault rifles for indian army under the provision of the emergency financial powers granted to the three services to make urgent purchases so this is russia and this is rifles ak 103 and this deal is on the lines of the mega infantry modernization program by the indian army for the replacement of its aging and obsolete weapons with a large number of the light machine guns battle carbines and assault rifles so no specification on the number of rifles or the cost of the procurement has been provided so i am only telling you the name of the assault rifle this is ak103 second it belongs to russia so you can also see here moving to next question but it is from picture that 2021 international day of remembrance and tribute to the victims of terrorism uh, observed on the 21st of august so it, it is uh, observed by the united nation so it is also known as the united nation international day of remembrance and tribute to the victims of terrorism and it is annually observed on 21st of august to honor and support the victims and survivor of the terrorism the day also aims to promote and protect the human rights and the fundamental freedom of the victims of the terrorism and the first international day of remembrance and tribute to the victim of terrorism was observed on the 21st of august in the year of 2018 it means now it is the fourth in 2021 and what is the theme of this day theme is connections so remember and one important organization which is also related to this day it is united nations office on counter terrorism oct united nation office on counter terrorism its headquarters is in new york and this body was established in 2017 moving to next question again it is from picture it is one of the variety of algae and uh, algae with umbrella like head discovered on andaman island and it is very much beautiful you can see here and guys name of this uh, algae is uh, uh ecta bularia my pronunciation can be wrong but uh, uh, you can uh, comment me if it is wrong ecta bularia jal kanyak jal kanyak is basically jal means water jal means water so it is a sanskrit word so it is a new algae species discovered on the island of the andaman and nicobar and a team of marine uh, biologists from the central university of punjab uh, has discovered a new marine algae species with an umbrella like cap on the islands of andaman and nicobar and the new species has been named as ectabularia or acetabularia jal kanyak 
after the sanskrit word jal kanyat which means goddess of oceans goddess of ocean you can see here goddess of ocean and man made and the last time a new algae species was found in island or in andaman and nicobar was in 1984 so after a long time a new algae species was found in andaman and nicobar that's why this question is important otherwise you can skip this question moving to next and it is a part of our one liner important points here is the first point and it is very important World Senior Citizen Day 2021 also observed on 21st of August and it is to recognize and acknowledge the contribution of the elders to the society and their inclusiveness in the society and the day aims to create awareness about the issues and challenges faced by the elderly but you have to remember the World Senior Citizen Day was officially founded by former president of United States of America uh, who was named as Ronald Ronald Reagan Ronald Reagan so this day is created by this person who was the former usa president next former indian footballer chin uh, chinmoy chatterjee passed away so by the name you can guess that he belongs to which state he was belong to west bengal and he was also died in west bengal so you have to remember the name chinmoy chatterjee remember the name of the state west bengal and the profession is uh, 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 game and game is football so he was a part of indian football team during 1978 uh, in the bangkok asian games and he was represented east bengal in the calcutta football league he was also represented west bengal in the four santosh trophy matches and has won three of them and he has served as the assistant coach of east bengal after his retirement but you have to remember footballer name is chinmoy chatterjee belongs to west bengal moving to next next is government of india set up a committee headed by the sunil sethi to double the production of and exports of the handloom so we are talking about the textile industry so government of india want to uh, double the production remember double the production and quadruple the exports of handloom so in the export they want four into uh, uh, exports uh, with the current time and double the production within the three years so this is the target of the ministry of textile and the committee will be headed by sunil sethi who is currently the chairman of fashion design council of india new delhi sunil sethi you have to remember this keyword and the committee shall submit its uh, primary report or the preliminary report within 30 days and final report within the 45 days the day of its constitution and uh, uh, the committee will suggest the strategy and policy framework for doubling the production and for improving the quality of handloom products with the aim of enhancing income of the weaver so that they can export very largely and remember about ministry of textile uni minister is piyush goel now not samriti rani piyush goel ji uh, piyush goel ji is currently member of rajya sabha from maharashtra next icic bank and sb cards leads new uh, new issuance of the credit card as hdfc bank under temporary halt so uh, in december 2020 you can say the reserve bank of india has stopped hdfc which has the largest credit card base in india from issuing new credit card due to series of digital banking outages Uh, so icic bank and sbi card have a strong growth in the new credit card issuances uh, from december 2020 to february 2021 and after the temporary halt of hdfc bank limited from issuing new cards from december 2020 just remember or just read this news next up government or the uttar pradesh government renamed kakori kand to kakori train action because this kand word is not basically a positive word so that's why they are replacing this kand word with the train action So Uttar Pradesh government renamed the moment in the history of India freedom struggle the Kokori Kand uh, to Kokori train action as the word Kand denotes a sense of humiliation to the independence struggle because Kand means conspiracy so that's why it is also known as Kokori conspiracy so what is this incident Kokori train uh, action is a train robbery that took place at Kokori Kokori is basically a village in Lucknow Lucknow is in UP and uh, uh, up committed by the indian freedom fighters against the british raj on 9th of august 9th of august 1925 so this incident took place in 1925 and uttar pradesh is also celebrating the anniversary of kakori train action under the program chori chora chori chora mahotsav which is going to complete 100 years in 2022 because it was happened on the 4th and 5th of february 2000 uh, sorry 1922 when um, 22 english policemen were burned uh, by indians so after that gandhi ji suspended non cooperation movement and all india khilafat movement and after that even gandhi ji arrested and uh, he was announced six year jailed by the britisher but due to ill health he was uh, uh, you can say released in the 1924 after two years but you have to remember chori chora incident in 1922 and kakori kand or the kakori train action uh, was happened in 1925 
नेक्स्ट जनरल इंश्योरेंस बिजनेस नेशनलाइजेशन अमेंडमेंट एक्ट 2021 गॉट दी एसेंट ऑफ प्रेजेंट इट मीन्स प्रेजिडेंट अप्रूव दिस बिल सो दिस बिल गॉट एसेंट ऑफ द प्रेजिडेंट रामनाथ कोविंद जी एंड द बिल विल अमेंड द जनरल इंश्योरेंस बिजनेस एक्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन The bill seeks to remove the mandatory requirement of the holding of central government not less than fifty one percent the of the equity capital. It means government can now privatize this general insurance company. So now we are moving to the question of the day. What was the question of twentieth of August two thousand twenty one? Question was very simple. Who is the author of India's two thousand twenty Journal of the Quantitative Economics? And very important person is Joginder K. Alag or Alag. So you have to remember the name. Uh, he is a noted indian economist and even former union minister under the government of india he was the chairman of institute of rural management rural management from 2006 to 2012 so you have to just remember the name yoginder k alag and name of the book is important now we are moving to the question of the day very simple question who is called the father of direct taxation reforms in india direct taxation stand for income tax uh, you can say corporate tax these are the direct taxes So, who is called the father of the direct taxation reforms in India? You have to read the options carefully, and you have to answer me in the comment box. I am waiting your answer. But please like this video, please share this video as maximum as possible, and subscribe this channel by providing these three things. You are motivating me, and uh, please press this bell button and join our Telegram group from the description box link. But guys, remember, it is Affairs Cloud promise to boost your confidence in the general awareness section. But it is my personal promise that if you are watching the videos regularly. and if you are reading the current affairs from the pdf your current affairs section will go strong definitely it will go strong and uh, uh, don't take life so much serious life is fun always always be happy like this smiley don't take life so much serious thank you guys take care and bye bye